Tony Decker. I am a registered nurse, and this is Nursing Analysis. Today, we will be discussing the electrocardiogram, commonly called the EKG or ECG. This test measures the electrical activity of the heartbeat. With each beat, an electrical impulse or wave travels through the heart. This impulse causes the muscles to squeeze and pump blood from the heart. A normal heartbeat measure on an EKG shows the timing of the contraction of the upper atrium and lower ventricles. The right and left atria, or upper chambers of the heart, make up the first wave, which is called the P wave. There is then a followed flat line until the impulse reaches the right and left ventricles, or lower chambers of the heart. Once the impulse reaches this location, the next wave is formed, which is known as the QRS complex. This wave is then followed by the final wave, the T wave, which represents electrical recovery or return to a resting state by the ventricles. It is important to note that the atria return to a resting state during the QRS complex, which is ventricular depolarization or contraction. We are unable to visualize the atria resting or repolarizing as the QRS wave covers its presence. So, you must be wondering what an EKG will tell us. It gives us two major kinds of information. First, by measuring the time intervals of the form waves, we can determine how long it takes for the impulse to pass through the heart. This can tell us if the impulse is normal, slow, fast, or irregular. Secondly, by measuring the amount of electrical activity passing through the heart muscle, we can tell if parts of the heart are too large or overworked. The EKG waves are tracings recorded on grid paper. The horizontal axis of the EKG paper records time with black marks at the top of it. These marks indicate three second intervals. Each second is marked by five large grid blocks. So there are 15 large blocks and three seconds and each block equals 0.2 seconds. Within the large blocks are five smaller blocks, each representing 0.04 seconds. The vertical axis records EKG amplitude or voltage. Two large blocks equal one millivolt and each small block within equals 0.1 millivolts. We shall now break down the waves on a normal EKG. These tracings consist of waveform components that indicate electrical events during one heartbeat. The waveforms are labeled P, Q, R, S, T, and sometimes U. We will be discussing lead 2, which is the standard lead out of a 12 lead EKG. The first wave, which is the P wave, is the first deflection and is normally a positive or upward wave and it indicates atrial depolarization or contraction. The QRS complex follows the P wave and it normally begins with a downward deflection, which is the Q. 
Then it has an upward deflection, which is the R, and another downward deflection, the S. Together, the QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization or contraction. Following the QRS is the T wave, which is normally a modest upward waveform that represents ventricular repolarization or relaxation of the ventricles. Sometimes a U wave will be recorded and this can indicate the recovery phase of the Purkinje conduction fibers. So, when evaluating an EKG, what should we check? An eight-step process has been created for our assessment of the EKG. First, we need to assess the rhythm. We check the atrial rhythm by observing the P-to-P -P intervals. Are they occurring regularly? If they are not regular, is there a pattern noted? For ventricular rhythms, we examine the R to R intervals. It's important to keep in mind that small variations of the R to R intervals of 5 to 10 percent are still considered equal. If the R to R interval is irregular, we need to determine if it is regularly irregular. Is there a pattern such as increasing R to R durations, or are they completely irregular with no discernible patterns? The second assessment is the heart rate. This can be measured by counting the number of QRS complexes that occur over a six second interval and then multiplying that number by 10. For example, if you have seven QRS complexes present in a six second strip, you take the seven and multiply by 10 to give you a rate of about 70 beats per minute. It can also be measured by counting the number of small boxes between the R to R interval and then dividing this number into 1500. The second method will give you a more accurate rate. The third step is to evaluate the waves and the delays between them, starting with the P wave. In a normal EKG, the P wave precedes the QRS complex and the amplitude or voltage is normally 0.05 to 0.25 millivolts, which equals about uh, 0.5 to 2.5 small boxes in height. The duration of the P wave should be 0.06 to 0.12 seconds, which equals about one and a half to two and three quarters small boxes wide. So, we check for the presence of the P wave and its regularity. There should be one P wave for each QRS complex and they should be smooth, round, and upright. Next, or fourth step in the process, is to evaluate the PR interval, which indicates atrioventricular conduction time. We begin by measuring at the beginning of the P wave and all the way to the beginning of the QRS complex. Normally, this interval is between 0.12 and 0.20 seconds, which equals about three to five small boxes. This interval shortens with an increased heart rate. We now need to measure the consistency of the PR interval across the EKG tracing. Are they all equal or do the lengths differ? The fifth step of our assessment brings us to the QRS complex which indicates ventricular depolarization or contraction. The ventricles have a larger mass than the atria and this explains why the QRS complex is much larger than the P wave. It is important to know 
that the QRS complex is made up of three wave components and that one or two of the components may be missing or not registering on the tracing. And we're referring to the Q and the S. And that is considered to be normal. To assess the QRS complex, we must measure from the end of the PR interval to the end of the S wave. Normally, this interval is 0.08 seconds to 0.10 seconds. We must also note the consistency and regularity of this complex in our assessment. The sixth step of the assessment covers the T wave. The T wave is an asymmetrical upward wave form which follows the QRS complex and represents the repolarization or relaxation of the ventricles. We must keep an eye out for the T wave if it has any downward or negative deflections and for any T waves that have tall pointed peaks because this can indicate among other things an electrolyte imbalance. But for the purpose of this video we will only be mentioning assessment techniques and what to observe for. We will discuss cause and effect of the EKG rhythms in upcoming videos. The seventh assessment tool is for the QT interval. This interval indicates both repolarization and depolarization or relaxation and contraction phases of the ventricles. It is measured from the beginning of the QRS complex to the end of the T wave. Normally, the QT interval measures 0.36 to 0.44 seconds, which equates to about 9 to 11 boxes in width. It is important to note that this number can vary with age, gender, and heart rate. Another way to accurately assess the QT interval is to remember that the QT interval will be less than half of the R to R interval for heart rates that are less than 100 beats per minute, that is. The last and final assessment is of the ST segment. The ST segment indicates the beginning stage of ventricular repolarization or relaxation. The ST segment is the line at the end of the QRS complex that follows to the beginning of the T wave. The normal ST segment is flat and isoelectric and corresponds with the plateau phase of the action potential. To understand more about action potential, Please review my previous video on the electrical conductivity of the heart. The normal duration of this segment is between 0.005 and 0.15 seconds. Now we also mentioned earlier about a U wave. It represents the repolarization of the Purkinje fibers. This wave is not always seen and its cause and origin is not completely understood, but has been linked to severe hypokalemia in the past, low potassium. The U wave normally goes in the same direction as the T wave, and the U wave size is inversely proportional to the heart rate meaning the U wave grows bigger as the heart rate slows down. U waves generally become visible when the heart rate falls below 65 beats a minute. Before we conclude, it's time I'm sure that you have all been waiting for. It's the Rhythmic Review. To start this rhyme, I need everyone to repeat after me so we all can learn how to interpret an EKG. Today, we will learn the heart's test of all its activity even at rest. 
a record of impulse we are able to save as the measures are recorded with each wave. We start with a P and end with a T. Atrial contraction creates the P wave action. Smooth and round with no extra shapes found. 0 0.06 starts this fix and when it is through we should never pass 0 0.12. Next, we have the PR interval, which gives the blood time to reach each ventricle. We measure this part from where the P wave starts, from the upper portion of the heart. The atrial blood pass is completely through, just at the beginning of the letter Q, which should give us 0.12. We know the ventricles have received plenty as long as this measurement does not pass 0.20. We move along to the QRS reaction, which indicates depolarization or ventricular contraction. The QRS complex is the biggest impulse in this test, as its contracting waves hide the atria at its rest. Muscular contraction has met its fate, measuring at least 0.08. To determine if it's late, count it again. This measurement should not pass 0.10. As we come to the end of this test, it is now time for the ventricles to rest, and you will now see the last impulse of repolarization, the letter T. So wave P to the QRS inverted V that ends at the T, atrial contraction ventricular reaction, T satisfaction. The top will squeeze, pause or freeze, and the atrium seize, then reaction and QRS ventricular contractions, and then the T wave relaxing. I bet you thought that we were through, but sometimes we forget to mention the letter U. Thank you for watching today's video. Please hit the like and subscribe button to enable the production of future videos and educational content.